Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and in this video we are going to take a journey back in time and look at all of the Games Workshop games that they have ever released. Having spent quite a while compiling this list and trying to get it as accurate as possible, it dawned on me what a monumental task this actually is. A true fact-finding mission. Games Workshop have released so many games with multiple editions, it's actually pretty hard to keep track of them all. I'll attempt to keep the particulars relatively brief because if I didn't, I feel like we might be here forever and nobody really wants to look at my face or listen to me talk for three hours. I'm not going to go through all of the licensed games, board games and the computer games Games Workshop have released or had a hand in, although a special mention on the games, the computer game side to Chaos Gate, Shadow of the Horned Rat, Final Liberation and of course Warhammer Total War. I'm going to start with the bigger, more popular games as I feel they have had the biggest impact in the wargaming world. But fear not, I will go through all, hopefully, of the other releases too, so bear with me. But with that, let's get to it. The company was founded in 1975 by three friends, John Peake, Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson. They began making their own wooden board games and had a hand developing other games like the Warlock of Firetop Mountain and the Dungeon Quest series. The Warlock of Firetop Mountain was part of the Fighting Fantasy series. This was a single player role playing game book created by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston. The first volume in the series was published in paperback by Puffin back in 1982 and didn't end until 1995. But things really took off for Games Workshop when the American creator of Dungeons and Dragons asked them to become their first UK distributor. With that, the first Games Workshop store opened in Hammersmith, London in 1978 but it wasn't really until 1983, when they created Warhammer, that the company we know was truly started. Warhammer Fantasy. The first edition, written by Brian Ansell, Richard Halliwell and Rick Priestley, was published in 1983 as Warhammer, the mass combat fantasy role-playing game. It consisted of a set of three black and white books. Volume 1, Tabletop Battles, which contained the core rules. Volume 2, Magic, which explained rules for wizards of different levels and power. And Volume 3, Characters, which is quite self-explanatory. This was, in essence, an RPG as opposed to a true tabletop game. Second edition fantasy in 1984 split the rules into three more rulebooks. Combat, Battle Magic and the Battle Bestiary, with full colour artwork by the great John Blanche. Now it was the third edition published back in 1987 as a single hardback book, while Army Lists were published in a separate book called Warhammer Armies in 1988. The fourth edition released in October 1992 and it took a significant step away from third. The rules were more refined with actual rules for list building. You had characters, troops, monsters, war machines, etc. And it started to add restrictions into those lists. These were the true Warhammer fantasy rules that we came to know and love. This also featured the first fantasy box set, which was High Elves vs Goblins. Fifth edition released in October 1996, and it reintroduced the Bretonian forces and reworked the Slam to create the Lizardmen that are still around today. And it released them as a box set. This edition was also aptly named Hero Hammer, mainly because one dude would ride around on a dragon or something, fly high, land into an army and destroy everything single-handedly. The sixth edition, and one of my personal favourites, was released in the year 2000. It was published as a box with a soft cover rulebook and miniatures featuring the Orcs versus the Empire. We then swiftly moved on to the seventh edition rules, which were released on September the 9th in 2006. This again was available in two forms, as a single hardback rulebook, and as a complete box set called the Battle for Skull Pass. Eighth edition was released on the 10th of July in the year 2010 and came with a new starter set, Island of Blood, which featured High Elves vs Skaven. Now this would be Games Workshop's final Warhammer Fantasy release, and the models still stand up today, and some or most of them are still available on their site, which you can use for Warhammer Age of Sigma. A small side note here to mention would be Warhammer Ancients, now this was a rulebook developed to allow you to play historical battles in the Warhammer setting or the rule set. The game rules were heavily based on the 5th edition of Warhammer, so a fair few years back, with magic dropped and more detail added for ancient weapons and formations. 
The core rulebook included an army list for early Imperial Roman and Barbarian armies. A range of supplementary books were then released to provide more army lists, each focusing on a particular period and place. A second edition Warhammer Ancients rule set was released in April 2010, written by Martin Gibbons, but on the 24th of May in 2012, Warhammer Historical closed their website for good. There is some hope for fantasy players though, for in 2019 it was announced that Games Workshop is working on Warhammer The Old World, a new war game set in the old world, and we've already seen Kislev and some other armies previewed so far. Man of War was released in 1993 and dealt with the sea battles of the Warhammer fantasy world. The game typically used a small number of models, maybe half a dozen to a dozen models per player. Each model had a corresponding template to record damage. Some innovations were present in this back in the day, such as alternative unit activation. Not essentially the same game, but Dreadfleet was a limited edition game from Games Workshop released on the 1st of October in 2011 and is set within the old Warhammer Fantasy world. More Time is a tabletop game published by Games Workshop in 1999, somewhat of a cult classic. It was a variant of the company's Warhammer Fantasy game, designed by Alessio Cavatore, Chumos Pirinen, and Rick Priestley. More Time features a campaign system in which warbands gain experience and equipment as the campaign develops. A More Time annual was released in 2002 increasing the number of officially available warbands. Still a game much loved by many, despite some possibly clunky mechanics, I think personally it's a great game and one I played quite a lot of back in the day. Talisman The Magical Quest Game is a fantasy-themed adventure board game. Originally designed and produced by Games Workshop, the game was first released in 1983. It has gone through three revisions, and as of 2021, the fourth edition in 2008 is the latest version. You can still buy this game, it is excellent. The first edition of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader was published in 1987. Games designer Rick Priestley created the original rule set based on the second edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. And it was primarily, to be honest, a role-playing game rather than a strict war game. Unit composition was determined randomly until White Dwarf supplemented the game with additional army lists. Games Workshop then released two supplementary rulebooks, Realms of Chaos, Slaves of Darkness, and Realm of Chaos, The Lost and the Damned. These added in the Chaos factions, the demons, and their gods. Interestingly, lore-wise, back then the Emperor was capable of communicating, despite being hampered by very old age. The second edition of Warhammer 40,000 was published in 1993, with Andy Chambers at the helm, and he introduced some major revisions both to the lore and to the game, which would go on to define the game more as we know it now. With this was possibly the most iconic box set of all time. It featured Space Marines versus Orcs, with an absolutely beautiful cardboard dreadnought, and some classic Orcs and Space Marines posed in their beautiful way of the early 90s. The third edition of the game was released in 1998, with the rules being simpler and more streamlined than the previous edition. The rulebook for the first time was available alone, and we saw the introduction of the Dark Eldar, or Drakari as they're now known. The fourth edition of Warhammer 40,000 was released in 2004 and featured the Battle for Macrag box set, featuring the Ultramarines taking on some Tyranids in defense of their homeworld Macrag. Fifth edition of Warhammer 40,000 was released on July the 12th in 2008, and was essentially the same game as the previous edition, with very minor changes. Sixth edition was released on June the 23rd, 2012. Changes to this edition included the optional psychic power card system, similar to what was happening in Warhammer Fantasy Battles at the time, and the way damage is resolved against vehicles. We also saw the Dark Vengeance box set, which included Dark Angels against Chaos Space Marines. These models were new and pretty darn cool, we also saw the introduction of the Imperial Knights. Seventh edition was released on May the 24th in the year 2014, and it introduced for the first time a dedicated psychic phase and changeable mid-game tactical objectives. The eighth edition was released on June 17th, 2017. This version introduced for the first time a huge overhaul of the system, replacing everything that happened in the past five editions. We had no longer had armor values, they had wounds, and stratagems were for the first time included in the game. 
Games Workshop also moved the lore on quite significantly, and we saw the introduction of the Primari Space Marines alongside the first Loyalist Primarch, Rebute Gilliman. The Dark Imperium box set was released as well, which included the new Primari Marines and some updated Death Guard models too. Then we moved on to the final edition, the edition we are on now, which was 9th edition, and this was released back in July 2020 with the Indomitus set. The game itself was, in essence, very similar to 8th edition, with only minor changes made. Since then, we have had so much stuff come out. We have seen the return of the Squats or the Votan. Multiple updated, updated ranges for Necrons, Eldari, Chaos, Orcs, Chaos Knights, Ashton Militarum now, and even more. We have no confirmation, but I'd expect 10th edition to be not too far around the corner, so do keep those eyes peeled for that. Dark Future, one we can't forget about, was released in 1988. This is a Mad Max-like game of vehicular combat set in a fictional alternate world 10 years after the American government privatized all police forces. Imagine 1995 being actual Mad Max. Um, the box came with plastic cars and motorcycles, a rule book, counters, and everything else you would need to play the game. In 1990, Games Workshop published an anthology of Dark Future short stories titled Route 666, and then published a number of Dark Future novels. Blockmania is a board game published by Games Workshop in 1987, and was based on the old Judge Dredd comics. In the same year, Games Workshop also released an expansion called Mega Mania that allowed up to four players to play. More rules and tiles titled Block Mania Happy Hour were published in the October of 1987 edition of White Dwarf. We saw Battlefleet Gothic. This was a miniature war game produced from 1999 to surprisingly 2013. It simulated combat between large spaceships and was developed primarily by Andy Chambers. It featured spaceships from most of the factions you'd know. We had Eldar, Orcs, Space Marines, the Imperium, Chaos, and several others. And it was a small scale spaceship game measured out in millimeters with blue whippy sticks rather than inches, which were the red whippy sticks. Many an hour I remember measuring and guesstimating my Nova cannon to hit bang in the center of my brother's Chaos ship. A great game, no longer supported by Games Workshop, but possibly something we might see in the future, as we are now seeing quite a lot of the older games getting brought back. The Adeptus Titanicus 1988 game was the first to introduce the idea of epic scale gaming, that is, 6mm scale miniatures. One player controlled some Imperial Titans, whilst the other controlled some Chaos Titans, reenacting battles from the Horus Heresy. This was added to with Space Marine, which added infantry into the game mechanics. Titan Legions was released in 1994 as a box set, and it contained an Imperial Imperator class Titan, two Orc Mega Gargants, 10 Imperial Knights, 12 Orc Bone Breaker tanks, nine car buildings plus rule books, data sheets, unit cards, and counters, everything you would need to play. The third edition of Epic was released as Epic 40,000 in 1997. It didn't go down all that well, and the game had a very short period of support, just six months from the company before it was withdrawn. It was over 20 years later when we saw Adeptus Titanicus 2019 and Aeronautica Imperialis 2019. Games Workshop have continued to support this game even now with new supplements and models and books and rule sets quite continually. Bombers over the Sulphur River. Released in 1998, you can take the part of the Orc fighter bomber pilots, or you can command the heroic Imperial Defense. It included several aircraft miniatures from the 40k Epic line. These were the 6mm size miniatures. In 2005, the game was re-released in a free print-and-play PDF file from Games Workshop's Specialist Division website. The first edition of Space Hulk was released in May 1989, and it is a light miniatures war game set in the Warhammer 40k universe. It has a relatively simple rule set and is more of a traditional board game as opposed to a true tabletop game. A small mention here for Space Crusade, which was a cooperative effort between Milton Bradley UK and Games Workshop. It took the role-playing elements from Milton Bradley's Hero Quest and merged them with Games Workshop's Dark Vision of the Future. We then saw Advanced Space Crusade, which was a modular board game published in 1990 by Games Workshop alone. Without the license from Milton Bradley, many of the components of Advanced Space Crusade were released in 1993. 
This was under the addition of Tyranid attacks. For Space Hulk, the rules have remained very similar throughout the years, with the second edition of Space Hulk released in April 1996. We saw third edition in September 2009, fourth edition of Space Hulk in September of 2014. This game was largely a re-release of the third edition with a few rules tweaked. The first edition of Age of Sigmar in 2015 replaced the much-loved Warhammer Fantasy Battle. This launched with Spire of Dawn, the first Age of Sigmar box, which reused the High Elf and Skaven models from the Isle of Blood, the Warhammer 8th edition starter set. Interestingly, the initial release of Age of Sigmar did not include points values for individual units. These were added a little later on. It was, to be honest, a little silly and had some pretty random rules involving your moustache, uh, if you had one, how good you were at doing a war cry and talking to your mounts, uh, of course, invisible. I think the intention here was to promote roleplay rather than a strict war game. Second edition Age of Sigmar was released in 2018 and introduced the Endless Spells. June 2021 saw the third edition and this included a full overhaul of the rules in general. Battalions were introduced. By this point, the rules are very much their own system and the law is now firmly established. Personally, it's taken until this edition for me to enjoy it and get into the storyline. I like the fact they're now referencing the old world. So for those of us that missed the good old days, we can now finally get involved and catch up with the game as it's meant to be. Released in 2019, Warcry is Age of Sigmar skirmish game developed by the makers of Kill Team and Warhammer Underworld. It pitted small warbands against each other and was a great game. It was very similar even when they moved on to second edition, which was released in 2022 with the Heart of Gur set. The rules essentially stayed the same. It was just an updated rule set with additional models and a full compendium to allow you to play most models from the Age of Sigmar range. Warhammer Quest is a fantasy dungeon role-playing adventure board game released in 1995 as a successor to HeroQuest and Advanced HeroQuest. Games Workshop stopped producing the original Warhammer Quest back in 1998. But 18 years after the game ceased production, Games Workshop released Warhammer Quest Silver Tower, the Age of Sigmar version, in 2016. This was followed up by Shadows Over Hammerhell in 2017, the 40k version of Blackstone Fortress in 2018, and more recently, Warhammer Quest Curse City and its current expansions. Back in the 1980s, Games Workshop produced a range of miniatures for the Lord of the Rings. This was the first range of Lord of the Rings miniatures that Citadel created, taking over from Grenadier Miniatures in 1985, before the license eventually passed to Mithril Miniatures around 1987. The game was later reintroduced back to Games Workshop. Full rules and various box sets were released alongside the films. We had The Fellowship in 2001, Two Towers in 2002 and The Return of the King in 2003. Now White Dwarf supplemented a lot of the games with additional scenarios, characters and rules. It wasn't really until the fourth edition, I suppose you'd call it, when the one rulebook to rule them all came out. This contained the entire set of rules in a single large volume, including those of the previous supplements. 2012 gave us The Hobbit Game, which included updated rules and new profiles for the forces of good and evil that appeared in the first of The Hobbit movies. Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game in 2018 updated again the main rule system, replacing all prior rule sets. Included with this was the awesome starter set, The Battle of Pelennor Fields, putting the Witch King against Theoden, my favourite Lord of the Rings character. The future of the Lord of the Rings at the moment looks bright, with the Battle of Osgiliath just around the corner. Warmaster was released in the year 2000 and it is a rule set written by Rick Priestley, published by the Specialist Games Division of Games Workshop and set in the Warhammer Fantasy setting. It was quite different from Warhammer Fantasy in both appearance and gameplay as it used 10 to 12 millimeter miniatures. In 2005, Games Workshop released a box game called Great Battles of Middle-Earth the Battle of Five Armies. This was based on the battle from the Book of the Hobbit. The rules were heavily based on Warmaster and it used the same miniature scale. Also in 2005, Warhammer Historical published Warmaster Ancients, a modified version of the fantasy rules suitable for battles covering a period from the early biblical times. In mid-2006, a new online supplement 
was added to the Specialist Games website known as Warmaster Armies. In 2010, Warmaster 2nd Edition was released. Since 2017, a revamped rule set was released by the Warmaster community called Warmaster Revolution, so make sure to go and check it out. Blood Bowl is a miniature board game created by Jervis Johnson based on American football, but in the Warhammer fantasy world. The first edition was released back in 1986, and players or figures in the first edition were represented by small pieces of cardboard. It then saw several releases and adaptations throughout the years, with models being introduced during the latter end of the first edition. We had loads of different versions. We had second edition in 1988, Crunch, which was like Blood Bowl in 1991, third edition in 1994, fourth edition in 2001, and this would be the last edition for nearly 15 years, until November 2015, when Games Workshop announced the reintroduction of the specialist games, and of course, with that, Blood Bowl. Ultimately, the rules were very similar throughout all of those different editions, until they developed 5th edition Blood Bowl in 2016. Some minor tweaks saw 6th edition Blood Bowl in 2020, and this has seen a lot of releases from Games Workshop, including individual box sets for most of the teams, with new models for nearly every team, with still more on the way. So the future of Blood Bowl is very much there, strong and supported by a great community. Gorka Morka. Released in 1997, this was another cult classic featuring, surprisingly, orcs. The rules were derived from the second edition of Warhammer 40,000, but with a few extra vehicle rules and an extensive campaign system. In 1998, it received an expansion set, Diggernob, which introduced additional playable factions, the, the sort of more humans and the little goblins, special characters and scenarios. This really was a great, fast-paced little skirmish game and something I would quite advise you to play. Necromunda was released in 1995 and written by Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson, Rick Priestley, and was in short a futuristic miniature skirmish game with a well-made campaign system. The game took on the core elements of Warhammer 40,000 Second Edition. It was supported with individual gang sets and some awesome cardboard terrain but it would be over 20 years until we would see a new edition, which came in 2017 with Necromunda Underhive. We got a whole host of new releases of each warband, along with additional factions and models, and eventually, a few years later in 2022, we got Necromunda Ash Wastes, which moved the whole game into a new arena, reaffirming that this game is in fact here to stay. Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse. The first print of the Apocalypse sourcebook was released in October 2007, during the latter days of Warhammer 40,000's fourth edition. The release of the fifth edition of Warhammer 40,000 in 2008 prompted Games Workshop to start working on an update. It culminated in the announcement of Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse Reload. The newest edition was released in July 2013, along with the new models, templates, box sets, and scenery pieces. In 2012, Games Workshop released Horus Heresy The Age of Darkness. This was via Forgeworld, written by Alan Bly and Andy Hall. Now, this was a game set 10,000 years before Warhammer 40,000, and the lore has been there for a long time. They have alongside this a whole series of Horus Heresy books, which I would advise reading. It was first given to us by Forge World, Games Workshop side piece, the, the slightly more expensive resin part of the world, and they started releasing models, infantry, and Primarchs into the game, something many of us have been anticipating and waiting for for a long time, myself included. It came with seven books released throughout the years. These were the campaign books, which gave you more information on in-depth parts of the fluff and narrative, and that is the primary part of the game. It is a narrative, story-driven game. In 2015, via the box set Betrayal at Kalth, Games Workshop supported the game by bringing plastic figures into it, making it more affordable for everybody. A few years later, the Burning of Prospero box set came as well, before we got a full revamp and everything started coming out in plastic in 2022. This is the current second edition Age of Darkness box set. With this, we have had a release of smaller codexes alongside more and more plastic vehicles and infantry models. The game is still currently being supported now and has become a mainstream income revenue for Games Workshop with everything coming out in plastic except for, rumour has it, the Primarchs and some of the specialist units. So if you're into the fluff, the narrative and have read the books and want to try out a game, this is the perfect start box and the perfect game for you to get into.
There are several different versions and possibilities of where maybe Kill Team officially started, but I'm going to look at Shadow War Armageddon, released in April 2017, which was a Warhammer 40,000 skirmish game that adapted the rules from Games Workshop's classic Necromunda and was a squad-based skirmish size game with a campaign system. The box released included modular terrain, templates and dice along with miniatures for Blood Angel Scouts and Orc Boys. I'm not sure if that is Kill Team as such. I suppose the first true edition of Warhammer Kill Team was launched in 2016 with a 32-page softback book primarily as a side game to 7th edition Warhammer 40,000. 2018 saw the second edition release followed up with several additional ways to play and supplementary books. We had Kill Team Elites, Commanders and Arena, along with in the end a full compendium in 2019. Third edition launched in 2021 with the Octarius set, giving us the first of multiple massive Kill Team boxes, followed up with individual squad releases. It breathed a new life into the game and simplified the rules quite significantly from 2nd edition, adapting them almost to the same as Warcry. Warhammer Underworlds is a tabletop game published by Games Workshop released in 2017. It is closer to a board game than a tabletop game. Players take control of a small number of models between 3 and 10 using a hex-based board system. It has had regular updates with new seasons nearly every year. It first started with Shadespire in 2017, then moved to Night Vault in 2018, Beastgrave in 2019, Diachasm in 2020, Nether Maze in 2021, and now Narwood in 2022. I'm sure there will be many more editions for many years to come. Inquisitor was a tabletop miniature game based in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, developed by Gavin Thorpe and others, and released in 2001. They tried something quite different here, because whereas the main line of Warhammer 40k was based on squad-sized tactical warfare, Inquisitor focused on a small group of player characters. To differentiate it from the Warhammer 40,000 cousin, it used 54mm scale models, which are available as specialist games from the Games Workshop catalogue. Over the years, Games Workshop has released a whole host of games via White Dwarf, the magazine. There are so many here, I can't mention them all, but I will mention some. Confrontation was a tabletop war game serialized in White Dwarf magazines in 1990. This later became the game we know as Necromunda. Full Tilt, a beautiful game, was a jousting game set in the old world realms of Bretonia. There was also Barroom Brawl and Brewhouse Bash, which were set in a tavern where you had to be the last character standing. Now, there are so many more, Genuinely too many to mention, and I'm sure I just messed them up and, and go wrong at this point in the video. Now, you may have noticed I have skipped some of the early board games Games Workshop produced as I felt like it became a sort of grey area as to who exactly licensed those games and produced them, but I'm sure there are some out there, and if there are more out there that I've missed, please do let me know in the comments below and let me know how the games are. I know it's been brief, I know it's been quick, but I just wanted to get through the basics of all of Games Workshop games to show you just how many they've released, and there are so many. It took me ages to research all this, so if you have enjoyed the content or have enjoyed this video, please do think about supporting the channel. There are links down there to Patreon, where you can support me, and there's a Discord group there where we do private chats. There is the links to the shop. I run Brawls of Wargaming over here in Ireland. I love introducing the game to brand new players because I hope you can tell I'm very passionate about it. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what else is to say. If you enjoyed this video and want to see one maybe based on all of the video games Games Workshop have released, or maybe some of the more role-playing elements, I'm more than happy to do a video on those too. But with that, I'll leave you to it. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll catch you in another video. Take care.